This video is about um, variables. Variables. Now, rather than defining it first, it's actually probably a bit easier to see what a variable is, uh, and then you'll get the definition. So as always, we're going to go to GCSE CS, and we're going to go to uh, the coding area, which is located under contact slash more, then code editor. And we click on that. I'll just drag in this uh, partition. So I've got just making the coding area a bit smaller and delete these comments. So what is a variable? Well, simply, if you've ever played a game on an Xbox console, uh, a lot of these games use a points or like a scoring system and whoever has the highest score wins. Okay, so during that game, you'd like the game to remember what your score is. That is a, an example of an, a, vari a variable. Okay, so whenever you ever get points, the points are stored in a variable. So my first question is, well, what would be the value inside the variable when you start the game? What would it be set to? And the answer is, well, zero. And as you play the game, the value would or should increment depending on how good you are. If you you know you shoot the bad guys or you collect the gold coins or you score a goal or whatever the game is, your score should change or increase. Secondly, you'd expect the game to remember your score every time it changes. It'd be annoying if you're playing a football game and you score five goals and it says you haven't scored any goals. Okay, so it needs to remember the value uh, every time it changes and then remember it until it changes again. So the next part of it is, well, where does it remember it? And the answer is it remembers it inside the computer in the memory. Well, what memory? Be more specific, RAM, okay? Random access memory looks a lot like this. These are RAM sticks found on a regular computer, and it will look like that in a tablet or a phone or whatever device, okay? So variables are remembered in RAM. RAM is the working memory. This website that I'm using to that you're seeing right now is being held in my computer's RAM, which means I can go downstairs, have a cup of tea and a biscuit, come back, and it will still be there because it's been remembered in the computer's memory in RAM. Okay, if there's a power cut and the whole thing switches off, if I boot the computer back up, probably it will have forgotten and I have to go back to the web page. But right now, this web page is being remembered in RAM. I took it, you know, it's been brought to me through the server and through the internet, but it's sitting on my computer in RAM. RAM, and that's where these variables are stored in RAM. Okay, so the next thing is well, not only um, can it store a value, zero is a value, 100 is a value, my variable can also hold an expression. Okay, score plus let's say 100 points or 100 whatever, 100 points. Okay. Okay, I'm going to run my code. What happens? Nothing happens, but also it does not crash. So my code is good and it's doing exactly what it should be doing, which is nothing. Python knows about my variables. It's just that I'm not doing anything with it yet. So let's do something with it. I am going to print. What am I going to print? Well, score. That's my only variable. So the question is, when I run this code, what's going to be displayed on the output? Have a guess. Well, here comes the answer, 200. Why? In line one, my variable score is set to the integer zero. In line two, my variable score is holding the value of 100 or set to 100. In line four, my value score is being replaced by the old score, which was 100, plus another 100, which is 200. So this score now here is set to 200. And then I want to use print to display whatever was inside of the most recent score. Well, 200 was inside the most recent score, and here it is being displayed. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is useful identifiers. All right. If I was a rubbish coder, I could call that X. And I say that's bad. That's a useless... Uh, that's a rubbish identifier or a rubbish name for a variable because nobody knows what X is. I know it, but you know, I go on holiday and somebody takes it over from me coding this FIFA game or whatever game it is. And they'll go, well, what's X? I have no idea what X is. That's so annoying. 
So I'm going to do Control Z, Control Z, and that will undo this bad code. And now I've got useful identifiers or useful variable names. We all understand what score is. Okay, so we'll run through that uh, the definition one more time. A variable is a name location in a computer's memory, like RAM. It stores a value, like these, or an expression, like this. And the value or expression can be changed. And that's it. That's what a variable is, okay? I'm going to create some variables, and then we're going to go for an. Ex uh, going to get you to do a task. Uh, I like basketball. I'm pretty sure I understand basketball. It's the one where you run up and down, throw a ball through a hoop, a hoop, and you get so many points. All right. So I'm going to display the word, uh, or the string, I should say, basketball. And I'm now going to set up some variables. Let's see. Um, I want a variable to remember the name of the teams. So I'm going to call it Team One Name. And since it's a name, I'm going to use a string, and I'm going to call it uh, USA. It could be anything. If, you, if you're coding this, call it whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to copy that and paste that using the Control C, Control V. Let's try that again. Control C, Control V. Now I'm going to change the one to a two. All right, and I'm not going to have the same team. I'm going to have uh, I don't know. Let's go with France. Okay. Team France. Okay, so I now have a variable holding the name or the string USA. I have a different variable holding a different string. Now in basketball, it's one of those games where you score points. So what would be a good name for a variable to hold the number of points scored by, I don't know, team one points. And at the beginning of the game, the number of points is always zero. And I'm gonna highlight that. Control C, Control V, change the one to a two, and the rest is done for me. So I've now set up four variables to handle the beginning of a, of a basketball game. I haven't coded the game, but I've got this tiny part of the game finished, okay? So if I run it, what happens? Well, it just displays the, the word basketball because that's all I've got it doing, and it doesn't crash, which means the rest of my code is good. So let's make it a bit more interesting. I'm going to use the print, and I'm going to put in here um, the variable. Uh, I'm going to take team one, and I'm going to put that actually just before this string. I'm going to put versus, which is a way of saying this team is playing that team. I'm going to take the variable from here, control C, all right, and then control V. Oops, let's get that correct. Take the variable for team two, control C, control V, all right? And I'm gonna drop in this little comma here. If you don't drop the commas in, it won't work, all right? Let's run that. Okay, so we can see I've displayed what's inside team one name. Well, what's inside the variable team one name? The string USA, and there it is being outputted. Then I've dropped in my own little string, and I've separated it with commas, which you need to do. And then it's displaying whatever's inside team two name. What's inside team, team, team two name? Well, it's France. So I've got USA versus France. Let me just show you what happens if I take away that comma, and then run that, let's see what happens. Okay, so I get an invalid syntax, and I'll do a video on these different types of errors. So I control Z, C-T-U-R-L Z, and I put my comma back in and I'll just double check it's working. And there we go, okay? You can make as many variables as you want. They can hold different data types. In this code, I'm using this data type, which is a string, and this data type, which is an integer. Okay, so now, here's what I'd like you to do. Okay, so have a go at this. Create the following code for a football or a soccer game, all right? That's the last time I'm gonna call it soccer. Display the title football score. So you should, be able to, you should be able to use the correct function to display the string football score. Create a variable that holds the name of the first team. And you can call the team whatever you want, like Germany, doesn't matter. Create another variable that holds the name of the second team. 
and call it whatever you want, Brazil, it doesn't matter, any, anything. Create another variable that holds the number of goals of the first team. Maybe they scored two goals, all right? And then finally, create another variable that holds the number of goals of the second team. Maybe they've only scored one goal, zero goals, 100 goals, it doesn't matter, okay? So there are four variables here. The last part, which is probably a bit harder, display, now display means use the correct function, I won't tell you what that is, display the score as the first team name, and then put a comma, don't forget the comma, the first team score, then this hyphen or a dash, the second team name, then the second team score. All right, remember to just run your code as many times as you want to check for errors. That's the challenge. Pause the video, have a go. Here comes the answer in three, two, one. Okay, so uh, here is the code that I've written. Your code might look a little bit dif different, but that's fine. That's the beauty of coding. So I'll just paste this in here. Let's check that it works. And there we go. So I've got the title football score and I've got Germany too. There's the hyphen, there's a dash and then one Brazil, which is a normal way that you would uh, display the score. And I'll just open that up so we can see the full code. Line one has the print function and it is printing or displaying to the screen the string football score. Line two has the print function uh, displaying an empty string, which is what gives us this nice gap here between these two outputs. Line four is a variable called team one name, and inside it is the string Germany. Line five is a different variable called team two name, and inside of that is the value Brazil, which is a string. Line seven is another variable called team one goals, and inside of that is the value two, which is the integer. And uh, line eight is team two goals. Inside that is the integer, which is one. Okay, those are the values, the integers. Finally, line 10 displays the value inside of team one, and then the value inside of team one goals, and then the string, which is just a hyphen, then the value inside of team two goals, and then the value inside of team two name. So for example, if I say, oh, you know, this team came back and scored a thousand goals and I run that and the output will show us that Germany scored two, whereas Brazil scored a thousand goals. OK, and that's it. That's uh, that's variables. Again, the definition is a named location in the computer's memory that stores a value or an expression. The value or expression can be changed.